Welcome back. There's growing concern today over the deteriorating situation in Iran. Uh, reports say U.S. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta expects Israel will launch an attack within months. And today, in an interview with Post Media, Prime Minister Stephen Harper called Tehran a, quote, fanatical and dangerous regime that would have no compunction about using nuclear weapons if it had them. So is this conflict past the point of no return? Joining us now from Washington is Mark Dubowitz, Executive Director of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. From Kingston, Ontario, we have Hu Cheng Hassan Yari, excuse me, yeah. Professor of Politics and Economics at the Royal Military College and Queen's University. Sorry about that, Mr. Hassan Yari. That's I was fine. practicing and, and still screwed up there. Uh, let's start with you, if we can. Yesterday, it was reported that uh, the United States Defense Secretary, Leon Panetta, thinks an Israeli attack on Iran's nuclear facilities is imminent. Um, what is your reaction to that? How real do you think that is, Mr. Hassan Yari? I think if uh, uh, Secretary Panetta is talking about that, it, it, he has to have good uh, uh, information from bright uh, sources. Uh, we know that in the past few months uh, there, were, uh, there was a lot of discussion about uh, this possibility of uh, Israelis or Americans to attack Iranian territory, Iranian uh, nuclear facilities and so forth. And then in uh, the, during that time, uh, uh, the question of uh, uh, closing the Strait of Hormuz uh, uh, was mentioned by some Iranians as uh, uh, retaliation in this case, but also uh, uh, against the sanctions and so forth. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the, what Panatha is talking about, probably we, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the picture is going to be more clear maybe uh, in regards to uh, uh, an Israeli uh, uh, clear and real plan uh, to attack Iran. Uh, Mark Dubowitz, what, what are your thoughts about, uh, you know, not only whether this is really happening, but also why Leon Panetta is saying it maybe at this time? Yeah, Rosemary, I think that you've seen over the past uh, year or two um, that the United States has used the specter of potential Israeli strikes to send a clear message to the international community that they have to enforce deep and crippling sanctions against this regime. And we've only seen in the past month or two that the sanctions really are starting to bite. The Iranian regime, for the first time since the Iran-Iraq war, sees that its oil wealth is now being threatened. And I think part of the statement that you're hearing from Secretary Panada is to now remind the community, the international community, uh, that time truly is running out, given the pace of the development of Iran's nuclear program. The time to enforce sanctions is now. I think that's a message to the international community. It's also a message to the Iranians mm -hmm. that the time for negotiations is uh, is now and that if they don't cut a deal there's a possibility of a Israeli strike or an American strike in the not too distant future. Mr. Hassan Yari, um, do you think that any negotiations or any sanctions would actually make a difference at this stage given that the Ayatollah has ratcheted up, ratcheted up rhetoric today uh, threatening retaliation to the threats from Israel? I mean how far are we past the point of no return? I think uh, we are not there yet, uh, uh, but the, the key question is really uh, the, the Ayatollah, the, you mentioned him, uh, the leader of the Iranian Revolution, Iranian Revolution yep. Islamic Re Republic, uh, Ayatollah Khamenei, the, uh, is he coming to uh, that conclusion that uh, uh, the survival of the regime is in jeopardy? In my view, if he reaches that point, uh, there is a good chance that he backs down, but uh, based on the uh, discourse he had uh, uh, today uh, mm -hmm. during the Friday uh, prayer, uh, he didn't really leave any there open. Uh, the, uh, the question, however, is that uh, uh, the Iranians in the past uh, f five, six years at least, uh, uh, they tried very hard really to push the international community as far as they can uh, in order to test uh, the resolve of, uh, of it. Uh, and it seems that they were successful because uh, uh, let's say in 2003, for example, uh, Iran was not capable to um, uh, enrich urani mm -hmm. uh, uranium at all. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad became uh, uh, prime, uh, pres uh, president, they sta the Iranians started to enrich uranium at 3.5%. Uh, 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 yeah. And now they are enriching to 20%. So it <coughs> means that uh, because of uh, uh, this uh, uh, lack of resolve uh, 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 by the inter international community, so the Iranian really pushed uh, the, the, the border, uh, the frontier as uh, yeah. uh, uh, far as they could, and they were very successful in that regard. So as far as the sanctions, uh, as my colleague mentioned, that the sanctions are extremely, are biting really very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, the Iranian people, the Iranian, Iranian economy is in an extremely bad shape, but we will see if 
uh, it seems that uh, uh, at least at, at, at this point, uh, the, the regime is ready to pay the price uh, to, in order to continue uh, the enrichment. Uh, Mark, Mark Dubitz, let me ask you, you, you said that uh, you know, we could be moving towards a conflict between Israel and Iran or mm -hmm. potentially the U.S. and Iran. How necessary does the inter or how much does the international community have to get involved if this does become a military strike or intervention? Uh, does it go without saying that the U.S. gets involved? Would Canada get involved? What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it, it certainly doesn't go without saying that the U.S. gets involved. And, and you know, again, it's, it's really a question of the political calculation of Prime Minister Netanyahu. First of all, what is the Israeli red line? It's very different than the, the American red line. Defense Minister Ehud Barak is talking about a zone of immunity. What he really means is the ability of the Iranian regime to bury its nuclear facilities in the Fordo facility underground, making it very, very difficult, if not impossible, for Israeli aircraft to bomb these facilities. When the Iranians reach that zone of, of immunity is the, is the Israeli red line. And mm. I think that's what Panetta is getting at. Mm. The question of military strikes then becomes, will the United States support Israel? And I think that the calculation there is pre-November and post-November, the ability of President Obama to resist supporting Israel before the November election will be uh, diminished significantly hmm. after the election. I think he's, he will be politically boxed in pre-November. He will have a lot more scope post-November. So I think that's, again, Prime Minister Netanyahu's calculation. And it's, and it's very important to understand, at the end of the day, if there is a military strike by Israel, the, there will be a significant retribution to be paid. The Iranians will strike facilities around the world. They go after Jewish community. They will go after Israeli targets. And I think it'll be very difficult for the United States not to get involved, especially since, and I'll end with this point, mm -hmm. that the uh, Director of National Intelligence, Clapper, before a Senate Intelligence Committee a couple days ago, said that essentially the Iranians are planning attacks on the American heartland. And uh, we've already seen an attempted attack on the Saudi ambassador in Georgetown, Washington. They're clearly planning for additional attacks. America will get involved, and it'll be very difficult for President Obama to stay out. Uh, Mr. Hassan Yari, your reaction to that and also to, to the thoughts that our Prime Minister, who's heading to China next week, is, is going to talk to China to try and get uh, some pressure from them to get Iran to pull back on its nuclear program. Yeah, there are a number of issues really to, uh, uh, <clears throat> to talk about here. Uh, in regards to China and Russia, the, those are the two countries that uh, are going to do whatever it takes really uh, to block any uh, move by the uh, UN Security Council to uh, to uh, give a green light to Americans, uh, for example, to attack Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, the other issue is that we have really to talk about is uh, the Arab uh, car, uh, uh, the Arab countries of the Persian Gulf. Uh, they are uh, uh, they are pushing uh, uh, actually the Americans too in order to uh, attack Iran because uh, for them this is a good opportunity uh, to resolve the issue of Iran once forever. And uh, in the, the discourse of, uh, of uh, or sermon of uh, Ayatollah Khamenei today, uh, he was uh, uh, sending a very clear message to some of Arab countries in the Persian Gulf mm -hmm. uh, not to get involved. For example, when he was talking about uh, uh, Bahrain, uh, he was very clear in that regard. And also, uh, he uh, added that Iran is going to take whatever it takes uh, uh, to help those who uh, uh, want to uh, harm the Israeli, the, the, the Zionist yeah. entity. He doesn't yeah. talk about Israel, the Zionist entity. So it means that uh, Iran, as Mark mentioned, uh, Iran is preparing really uh, his allies in the region and, uh, and outside of the region to uh, react uh, if ever we get to that point of okay. attack. Okay, we, uh, we tried to cover the bases there. It's a very complicated topic, and I appreciate you both trying to read between the lines and interpret what's going on for us, and I'm sure we'll have you back as this situation unfolds. Thank you very much both for your time. Mark Dubowitz from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and Huchang Hassan Yari from the uh, Royal Military College and Queen's University. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks very much. Thank you.